I've never felt like giving up, but it was a very, very hard time for me because I'd spent so much time, you know, building up this credible campaign. And as a young woman, let's face it, it was harder to be taken seriously as a candidate because people had certain conceptions of, of what I was and what I should be doing. So I thought about that and I thought about all the people who'd really stuck their necks out for me and I was embarrassed and it just was a very, it felt like everything I had worked for was sort of crumbling around me. But I talked to a woman, Sam Bennett, of the Women's Campaign Fund, who'd also run for Congress, and I, I was crying, I told her what happened, I asked her what I should do, and it was incredible because she had, her organization just conducted research about how women should respond to sexist attacks. And the conventional wisdom in politics, which sounds really stupid, but this is what people are advised to do all the time, is just to ignore it and hope it goes away. She said, you can't do that. You have to go out and call this out and use the S word and say it's sexist. And, you know, don't, don't apologize, but say this is not what people want to focus on. These aren't the issues that people care about, and it's part of why we don't have good people in politics. And then pivot to talk about the things that are the important issues that people should be thinking about and caring about. So that night, even though I wanted to hide in a corner and cry, <laughs> which I also did for part of the night, I went to camera and I defended myself, uh, and I did call in on a sexist. And at that point in the campaign, you know, it was always an uphill battle, our campaign, and I was thinking less about what impact it would have on my election day. And I was thinking more about what would, what would other women in particular, but other young people in general, what would they see in this moment? And I didn't want them to see someone who was cowed by this. Um, I wanted them to know that if they had some stupid party photos, which frankly, who doesn't, um, that they could still run for office and serve and they didn't need to be ashamed or afraid. In fact, the response went so well, um, it was called a model for how to respond to these sorts of situations. Uh, and we did some polling to find out, okay, our anecdotal evidence was good that it had gone well, but how did it actually go? 80% of people who had seen something about me in the media, which this was the only thing in the media about my campaign at that moment, um, they said what they saw either positively impacted their view of me or didn't change their impression of me at all. And we can assume because there was such a media buzz about it that it increased my name recognition. People learned about my campaign that wouldn't have known anything about it otherwise. So. Um, not only did the photos, obviously it wasn't enough to overcome a tough district in a tough year, but not only did they not break me or break my campaign or force me to quit, I actually think in the end it, w it helped me electorally. I think people respected how I responded and, and thought that they saw strength in, in what I did there.